All right, today, folks, we're going to talk about a law enforcement secret weapon. And for a change, when I use those terms, I'm not talking about the pen and the pad of paper like I normally am. Today, we're going to talk about this law enforcement secret weapon, the radio. And why do I call it a secret weapon? This seems like something everybody would know about and would be a big thing. But it has come to my attention, which things often do while I was training someone else, that people don't often think about all of the uses for this. We're going to talk about one particular use today. And that use is for running names and license plates. Now, of course, you say everybody knows the police can run names and license plates, but it's not the ability to do that that makes that a powerful tool. It's when we do it for a purpose, when we know what we're doing and we're planning in advance and strategizing why we're running that name or why we're running that license plate. I'll give you a real easy example. I have noticed over the years that the older cops get, the less likely they are when they go to a domestic to run the names of the people at that domestic. And I've noticed that the older cops get and the further they get along in their career, some might say the lazier they get, the less likely they are to run license plates in general, right? License plates, just in general, they go to a call and they're not... They're not running a license plate. When they walk up to the house with the alarm call and the car's in the driveway, it's the license plate sitting on the back of it or in the back window or something. Something looks sketchy about it or if it's parked in front of the house, they got a box truck parked in front of the house and there's alarm off there. They're real fast to go talk to people and clear that call as fast as possible. With domestics, we've all been on that domestic where two people are arguing about absolutely nothing and you want to say, listen, just shut up and go to bed. I'm leaving. Right? This is stupid. You're arguing about the remote control. And where running license plates and names comes in is that while we can say shut up and go to bed and clear that call and have that call cleared very quickly, that doesn't mean that long term that's going to solve the problem. Right? If you've been a cop for any length of time at all, you've gone to a domestic where you've done that and then you've come back and you've done it and you've come back and you've done it and you've come back. Same thing with customer management disputes. Right? You go to the restaurant. And there's someone there and they are screaming like a banshee going nuts about how there wasn't cheese on their sandwich and they want their 28 cents back for their cheese or whatever. And you go there and you tell them, listen, you can't get your cheese. You're going to have to sue them in civil court. Yada, 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 yada. I can't make them give you the cheese. I can't make them give you the 28 cents back. And they go, why did I even call the police? And I was like, well, I'm not really entirely sure why you called the police. I can talk to them. But you already talked to them and that didn't work, so how well do you think that's going to work? And then vice versa with the owner of the store, right? Like, yeah, you called us and I can talk to them and try to get them to understand where you're coming from, but that doesn't mean that this is going to be a long-term solution for the problem. Now, let's look at it. What happens when you get there and you run the license plate on the car of the person that's parked in the drive-thru and, uh, and won't move, right? You let them see you do it, right? You run the plate of the car parked in the drive-thru for, you know, the customer management dispute. They want their cheese. You let them see you do it. And then instead of three hours later coming back there because there's a brick thrown through the window of the drive-thru or they throw, they come back and they throw food at the people or they're waiting for them when they're gone for the day, they know you already ran their license plate that it came back, right? Same thing on domestics. You go to a domestic, start talking to both parties. What do we do? We take the people. We've gone over this before in videos, right? Take the people, get them separated. Hopefully you got more than one officer there. One person talks to one party. One person talks to the other party. You get their sides of the story, right? You've put the brakes on the situation. Now, before you get any further in, run their names. Cost us nothing to run names. Get on this little thing and say, County 291, blah, 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 one by name, one by file, however you say it, 27, 29, however you say it, run their names. And you know what? Yeah, maybe one of them will come back with a warrant. But if they do, your problem is pretty much solved for the night. The problem with the domestic might be a long-term issue, but you're not going to come back there three times that night for this domestic continuing to go on because dude's got a warrant or chick's got a warrant. You lock one of them up. Now they're out of the house. The other one's got nobody to fight with. And now it's done. Same thing with a, a license plate. You show up to a house. There's an alarm call off. There's a big box truck outside. Looks like a bunch of people working. You run the truck plate. comes back stolen. Would we rather know that before? Would we rather know that before or after we go into that house? 
If we walk up and we run the plate on the car and it goes back to a different type of car or it's stolen, we'd rather know that before we go in, right? So don't, don't get lazy. And this is one of the things that I see people do all the time. They get very lazy, very fast with running names, running license plates. It can solve your problems long-term. Customer management disputes, it's a great tool. Run everybody's name. Now, they're not going to come back and throw a brick through the window because if they get them on video throwing the brick through the window, you know exactly who they are and they know you know who they are, right? With domestics, I'd be amazed a number of times that, you know, I go for a domestic, come back, go for a domestic, come back, and on the third time I come back, dude's punched her in the face or she's hit him with a tire iron or something and they've run off. And then it's, well, who is this person? Oh, well, uh, here's their name. I only been knowing them like three weeks, so I don't know their date of birth and I don't really know where they live. They just hang out on my couch and, you know, I pick them up at the club and then nobody knows anything. And then you're going to be back there seven, eight times for this person coming back and breaking their car and all that. Run their names. It costs you nothing and it takes almost no time to do, right? They give you these things for a reason. Like, these are expensive. Well, maybe not this one. <laughs> We're getting new ones. But maybe not this one. But these things are relatively expensive. I mean, even to buy this, just this microphone thing is 150 bucks, right? You paid that to put the mic on it so you can talk on it. Talk on the thing. Run the name. So that's that chapter. I think a lot of people forget that. It, for private security, you know, people ask about private security. Private security companies often have in-house systems where they can check someone's name. You get somebody's name and you find out that they're trespassed, right? They already have a trespass warning against them. They already been told not to come back. Dude, they're done. You call the police. We already have a trespass warning against this person. We have them in custody if your state allows that, right? Then the problem's, then the problem's done. You know what I mean? The problem's done. You know the person's trespassed. You don't need another reason. Them being there is illegal, right? Uh, oh, we're only seven minutes in. That's not bad. Uh, coming up, I've got, I just got this in. Where is it? There it is. Bleed control kit from uh, Stat Medical Gear. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen this already. But this is in, and it's kind of funny because I already have a video that I've shot that I'm editing about what I keep in the bag that I keep in the trunk of the squad. And I was talking about how I needed a red uh, bag for medical kits because all of mine are black because that's how they're issued. And, uh... Stat, I was talking to them about it. They're like, oh, we have one of those. We're going to send it out. So this is pretty cool. We're going to get into that kit later. The uh, patches are in. I'll put a link down in the description later, but it's uh, freefieldtraining.com. Patches are up. $10 shipped anywhere in the United States. Uh, $6 international. Uh, I've been sending it to people internationally, and they have been getting them. So that's plus. It's a French cop who, uh, interestingly enough, he sent me a video. I wish I could splice it in, but, you know, cell phone and stuff. He sent me a video of his duty weapon. He's a municipal police officer in France. And his duty weapon is... I'm, I'm going to butcher the name if I even try. So I'll just tell you what it is. It's a 357 revolver that is... It was a licensed copy of a Ruger... Let's say a Ruger Security 6. Real cool stuff, though. And he's like... He showed me a video. Him in his squad car in uniform. Here's my duty weapon. And unloaded it. He's like, we carry 38 special plus P hollow points in it. And this is it. We're supposed to be going to Glock 17s next year. But we're still using these as police officers in France. Stuff you won't learn on Wikipedia. Really excellent stuff. And I got a zooming flashlight video coming out later. I would show it to you, but I already gave it to one of my buddies who's an evidence tech. And he likes the zooming flashlight because it makes like a, a really... Uh, really even beam when it's zoomed all the way out for certain streets and stuff, which is what I've been using it for. So I gave that off to him. Uh, what else do I got? That's about it. I got some other stuff in the can. I forget though. Uh, one on SWAT full and part time. And then another video on, what was it? Now I'm not going to be able to remember. I always do that when I go live. All right. So let's go back to the beginning. Let's see some comments. See what everybody's saying. Morning, 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 morning. Good morning. Love your channel. Thank you for watching. Uh, how has Motoro changed since it was sold? Motoro? Oh, Motorola changed since it was sold? I have no idea. <laughs> I didn't even know they were sold. I know I've got this. This thing was made in like the 90s, right? But uh, as much as I make fun of that, it, it works really well. So I can't complain too much. I mean, HT1000s pretty much the industry standard for a long time and we're still using a system that allows us to use these so the newer guys are getting they're getting a new motorola npx something or another but i don't have one of those because there's no reason to because i have this we're supposed to be going to the cook county sheriff's department uh radios 
they actually issue them to municipal police departments here that want to get on their channel, and that'll give me the ability to interoperate better. I can get on Isburn and other surrounding agencies straight from my radio, which is really cool to have it on your person instead of having to go back to the car and talk on Isburn. Really awesome. But I, I didn't know Motorola had even been sold, so I have no idea. I don't keep track of them. Oh, Francis says, good morning from ho uh, Homeland slash FEMA slash OEM master student and firefighter EMS specialist master minor student. <laughs> That's a long title. <laughs> Hello from a guy that hits people with a stick. If they need it. Uh, Mike Wilkerson says, uh, on a stakeout this morning, are there bad guys in the house behind you? Nope. Nope, I'm just off today. Which is great. I actually just came from the gym. So I'm drinking my protein shake and I was like, hey, I got some time on my hands. I don't have to pick the kid up for a while. Time to live stream. We're going to talk about running names and license plates. Alex says, second live stream. Going to watch it when I wake up, though, because third shift. I feel you, man. Go to bed. Go to bed. Watch it later. Give it a thumbs up, though, when you watch it. Uh, yep, says, I want to be a cop, too. Well, good luck. CDN Bacon says, love to wake and bake, bake my mind with knowledge. I'm, I'm trying. Uh, CJ Pete, man, Pete, what is so, what's with these names, man? People can't, you can't just be like Bob <laughs> on the internet. Everybody's got CJPKW45. No idea what that's supposed to mean. It says, hello from Maine. What are your thoughts on shotgun versus handgun for home defense? And then people jump in with their suggestions. Uh, let me give you my thoughts on shotgun versus handgun for home defense. It depends on your circumstance, right? Like, it's not... This isn't either-or stuff, right? It never is. I, I think I did... Didn't I do a live stream about, like, gear... We don't we don't select gear in a vacuum, right? I wish I could remember which one it was. I probably called it something silly to get views. We don't select gear in a vacuum, right? So, if you live in a very confined area, in an apartment, right... And your only threat really is that someone might crawl in off the fire escape or come in through the front door trying to break into your apartment because you work midnights and so you're sleeping during the day when burglaries happen, then a handgun might be better. But then my argument would be, hey, if, if that's your issue, maybe a baseball bat might be better. Depends on your circumstances and where you live. If you live in Japan in a high rise apartment and you need something for home defense, maybe a big stick would be better. Depends on your circumstances, right? If you live on 10 acres of land and, you know, your hillbilly neighbors next door like to break into stuff and they're nuts and they're on meth, then maybe a shotgun loaded with slugs might be better. If you're a rancher and you're on 400 acres of land, which I've kind of done that before. I worked at a Boy Scout camp. We had 406 acres and, you know, huge facilities. Maybe a Mini-14 might be better, or maybe a scoped rifle might be better. Depends on your circumstance. I don't think home defense... Home defense gets this thing on the internet. Everybody likes to talk about it because they want to give their opinions on it, but it's the same thing. Like, it would be really easy for me to come on here and say, buy this, this is going to work great, this is what you should use, and this is why, because it works great for me, because yada, 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 yada. But that's not the reality. Just like I can't... You can't say, like, what's a better daily driver, uh, a Ram 1500 or a Dodge Charger? Well, it's going to depend on who you are, where you live, and what you do with it. You know what I mean? That's it. Guns, cars, hammers. Right? All the way back down to the hammer thing. What hammer is the best for a homeowner? What is he going to do with it? Tank Snake says, don't be lazy, kids. And radios in the military is your secret weapon, too. Uh, apparently, they have the same issue in the Army. <laughs> Which I can believe. I can believe that. Because I've seen people that just, they'll go out and they'll do stuff, and they won't tell anybody that they're doing it, and then they start screaming for help. You're like, what are you doing? Tell us where you're at. It's not that hard. Johnny Reb says, I hate it when you go to a domestic and one person has hit the other one, and then you bring the cuffs out and have the same person who called cussing you out for arresting their partner. Such is life, and alcohol. I've noticed a lot of times alcohol plays a role in all of that. Right? They're drunk already and not making good life choices, which is why you're there being the adult in their relationship. And then when you start adulting, they start acting like kids again. That's that's life, man. I hate that too, but what are you going to do? Luckily, where I'm at, 
it's very rare for me to have to do it alone. And I know that's a thing for a lot of rural sheriff's deputies. And I could see that that being a real safety issue. I know guys that work way out in the country, and they say that's a huge safety issue. You have to do a domestic alone. You got to arrest one party. It might not be them that's the problem. It's you got to worry about the wife over there. I've had that occasionally where I'm at, but normally we're, we were at least in groups of two where I'm at, so I don't have that issue as much. There's someone to watch my back while I deal with this dude. Our problem is we start fighting with this dude, and then you got four family members decide they're going to jump in because they don't think he should go to jail because she's lying on him. <laughs> that's. Different problems in different areas. Tanks says 357 LOL, oh, that's brutal. Not in the Ruger, like he was using a, a Ruger uh, uh, security six, basically. Those are pretty heavy guns. They handle recoil pretty well. You get a, a large steel gun, 357 isn't that bad. And I guess in his area, that's just, he's like, we don't shoot people. <laughs> we have these things, but it's in case there's like a terrorist attack. So it's very unlikely they're going to use them. But they are, like he was saying, he, they are upgrading there. Ben Cunningham says, that's right, Johnny, a girl here was shot at and beat with a blender base and didn't want to press charges. It's See, in Illinois, we have this thing where we can be the complainant on a domestic. So if there's evidence that like husband beat wife or wife beat, wife beat husband, uh, I can come there and if if dude's injured and she like hit him with a tire iron, like there's evidence, there'd be otherwise evidence enough for an arrest, but she said, you know, Victim says, well, I don't want to, I don't want to press charges. That's great, but we can still arrest them and hold them overnight. And we have to send them after the bond from a judge in Illinois, which is a really powerful tool that needs to be used, you know, judiciously in order to affect justice instead of affecting just problem solving for the night. But it, it is a powerful tool. Like if there's a circumstance where dude's hurt. She hit him with a tire iron, and everybody's saying she hit him with a tire iron. And he's like, I don't want anything to happen. Or you're like, yeah, well, we're not just going to leave her here to kill you later. So that's I know that's kind of an Illinois-specific thing, because I've, I've trained guys that are from Indiana, and they're like, that's not the way it is in Indiana, but that's the way it is here. So that's kind of helpful for us. Uh, ben says, the new radios are nice and less chance of hitting the man down the button. Ex hitting the man down button accidentally can also hit it with a gloved hand now, too. Yeah, these not so much... Not so much with a gloved hand. You'd have a hard time getting it in there. I've never actually used this emergency button, so I don't have a whole lot to say on it. Like, I've tested it, and that's it. I've never I've never hit the emergency for anything. Like, my emergency button is up here, and I click on it and start screaming. I don't need, like, it does, the radio doesn't do anything extra for me hitting the orange button, other than freak everyone out. The MP SLC says, got my credentials today, very excited, was hired as a sheriff's deputy. It's my first week. Hey, Congratulations. Tony Dang says, is that all the police department in the U.S. use Motorola radio? It's it's not all anybody uses, but they are the most popular brand for police departments. And they have the largest selection. And so a lot of agencies use them. I have seen Kenwoods before, but that's very rarely. Most places are using some variety of Motorola radio. So the old joke is you can't outrun Motorola. Like, we talk about pursuits, and guys like, my car does 175 miles an hour, your car, oh, the Crown Vic only goes 145, and you're like, it, one, you're not going to drive that fast, you're going to crash, and two, this travels at essentially the speed of light. You're not, you're not outrunning it, like, we know who you are, shut up. <laughs> but, like, Motorola is just kind of the standard. Mike says, as a three-year cop, I appreciate the training, be safe, man. Thank you, be safe. <laughs> James Polosky says, shooting competition, you versus Mike the Cop. I don't think I've ever seen Mike the Cop do a video in which he was shooting. So, and I've never met the man. It'd be interesting. I'll take any opportunity to go to the range and just shoot at things. Anthony Ortiz says, can you run anyone's name? Yeah, that's what this, you put this little button here. And you push it. You start talking and say, County 291, one by name. And they go, go ahead. They're like, last name Ortiz, Ocean Robert, Tom, blah, 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 blah. And then 10 seconds to three minutes later, they come back with like, he's clear, valid, blah, 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 bl
Uh, Francis Oy says, haha, I value my boys in blue. You guys get the short on the stick much, so sometimes you guys get more than firefighter EMS boys. Eh, I don't know about that. I, you know, the firefighters run, Matt, they run in those burning buildings. I'm not real big on burning buildings and going inside of them, so they can have that. Also getting bled and vomited on. Yeah, I don't like getting vomited on. It's not, it's not pleasant. Abraham Hernandez says, here's an interesting question. Would you arrest both parties if they both had visible injuries, if they both said one hit the other, and vice versa, or would you arrest the initial aggressor? This goes back and forth with case law in Illinois all the time, and with what the state's attorney's office will prosecute all the time. Right now, we are on where we can arrest both parties. The, the legal concept under that, that, as it's been explained to me, I'm not an attorney, is that you're talking about two separate incidents. Right, and then they're going to go to court because there's probable cause to believe that they unlawfully struck the other one for two incidents, and they're going to go to court and argue over who was the initial aggressor and whether it was self-defense or not. And then at other times, there'll be new case law that'll be like, no, you can't arrest both parties because there can't be it can't be more probable than not that both parties were the were the aggressing party, and then. Somebody goes in and argues like, well, that's not what probable cause means. Probable cause doesn't mean more probable than not. It's less than that. So it could be both parties. And they go back and forth with it. Right now, I think we're still fairly certain we're still at the point where we can arrest both parties. But that's that's pretty rare that we would end up arresting both parties. In it. Uh, the, the times you're going to get that most is when you get there and they're both going at each other, right? Or there's like a bunch of witnesses that say they were both, like they were having a fist fight in the house or in the front lawn or something. We'd end up arresting both parties. I have done that before. It goes back and forth. The law is a living, breathing thing. And it's not just the Constitution. All law is a living, breathing thing. And case law and decisions change how we have to enforce it. Christian says, Hello from Austin, Texas. Listening to you in my pocket. That's okay. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Evil says, Are the frequencies in the U.S. encrypted here in Mexico? All police are moving to Tetrapole radios. Back then, cartels could spy on their frequencies. Some are and some are not. Where I am at, we are not encrypted. Uh, other places are encrypted. It depends on the agency. It's just like any other police gear, depending on what is seen as important by that agency. right? Getting encrypted radios, upgrading to better radio system, encrypted radios takes money from other projects. Right? So do you want to have brand new cars that are all-wheel drive? At a place like here, we get a lot of snow. Do I want a brand new Ford Explorers for all these people to drive around so they don't crash? Or do I want an encrypted radio system? Or do I want the very best ammunition? Or do I want the very best computer system? And administrators have to make those decisions, so it's different for every agency. Some are encrypted, some are not encrypted. Mine is not. Giovanni Delgado says, do you, other, do you do conferences slash seminars in other states? I do if I can. I don't want anything. I'm, the, I'm all about learning, man. I, anything to, to up my repertoire. If I can get there and cheaply and do it, I'll take it. Jared says, for us, we don't have laptops and vehicles, so we have to use our radios. I, Ten years ago when I started, I did not have a laptop in my car. I didn't have a terminal. So I couldn't run names on the terminal or license plates on the terminal. Everything had to go through the radio. We couldn't text message back and forth. We couldn't get calls on the terminal. I actually used to take a piece of paper and two rubber bands, and we would put it on the sun visor, and you'd keep a pencil in the rubber band, and then when you got a call, you'd write it on the paper and pencil so that it wouldn't, you know, sorry, so it would continue writing upside down and the pen wouldn't get, you know, get stuck. And you'd write the address and stick the pencil back in, and you'd drive. That's how we did it. And that's how it was done before computers. And up until very recently, I didn't have a terminal in my squad. When I got my new squad, I didn't have a terminal in it for a couple months. And I routinely take the terminal away from trainees. If I'm training somebody, we're not just going to... As soon as I see them look at the location system where you use the GPS to find where it's at, shut that thing off. If you've gotten far enough in where you've figured out where that's at, we're shutting this thing off. Obviously, you don't need it. You're that good right? We're going to try this for a while without the terminal. Because at the end of the day, the technology will fail us. We have to rely on our skill sets. CDN Bacon says, when people have those radio scanner apps on their phone, are those legit or just a gimmick? Is it non-encrypted channels only? Please enlighten me if you know. 
Uh, the radio scanner apps <coughs> are mainly non-encrypted channels because what you're doing there is somebody has hooked the radio, a radio like this or a base station up directly to a computer and they're streaming that. So it could be encrypted and if they have the encryption code, they can listen to it. If they can listen to it, they can stream it, right? Uh, the non-encrypted channels, they're basically just, you're hooking the radio to it. They're doing the same thing. If someone has access to it, they can stream it and then it works on the app. There is a little bit of a delay though on the app. I've listened to myself on the app and there's like sometimes a 30 second delay on some of them because of technology's got to go through the computer and, you know, out onto the internet and stuff. There's a little bit of a delay, but it's not terrible. So if an agency is on that, like if somebody's streaming it to the app, then you're going to be able to listen to it. But a person with that radio within earshot of that agency has to be receiving it through the airwaves and then stream it onto the app. If no one's streaming it, you don't get it. And that's why you get a lot of big agencies, but many times small agencies, you won't be able to stream it from your phone. Right, so Chicago PD, you're able to stream it from your phone. Um, Thornton PD here, real small town, nobody's streaming it, so you're not going to be able to get it on your phone. Bulldog RC95 says, "How does working part-time SWAT goes? Uh, working part-time SWAT means it's basically like having another part-time job. So you go your normal job, and then you have training, at least a couple days a month where I'm at, at least two days a month, sometimes three, sometimes a whole week." Uh, and then you do call outs and they basically, they just paid you on your phone. They send a boatload of text messages to your phone. Like we got this call out, you got to go and then you go. It's, it's a lot of work. It's like having another, it's like being full time and then having another 30 hour a week job some weeks. It's, it's rough. And depending on where you're at, it can be really rough. Chicago up until very recently was a part time SWAT team for Chicago. That's a lot of work. <laughs> False fam says morning, Tommy. Good morning. Uh, Francis Oy says, CDN Bacon, depends on freak and channel bases. Sometimes won't be set over radio or more private line. Okay. Rain says, hey, I'm at school. Nice. Ricardo says, hello from Italy. Hello from Dyer, Indiana. Liam says, I'm starting my EMT basic class soon. I ultimately want to work in local law enforcement. Do you have any experience with EMTs moving to law enforcement? I have a lot of experience with law enforcement where the agency requires that you go get your EMTB after you're certified and keep up your EMT certification. Some agencies require that. Uh, I know paramedics who have become cops and cops who have become paramedics. It's more often the paramedics becoming cops thing. I know one guy who's a full-time cop in my department also works as a full, as a part-time cop at another place. I forget where it's at, maybe Crestwood or something where he works part-time. But uh, it happens. But it happens as much as like an electrician who's a part-time cop. I mean, like, Rain says, I want to be a cop in California. Good luck. Marston says, hello from Poland. Hello. Uh, hello from pretty much Poland. <laughs> the south side of Chicago. <laughs> I might as well be living in Poland. Oh, we have so many good Polish restaurants here. The food is outstanding in Chicagoland area. Weston Stout says, could you talk or do a short video about detention officers in your county jail training experiences, what they carry, etc.? Uh, yeah, we might be able to cover that later. That's kind of a big topic for a single for the comment section of a live feed, but I'll put that on the list. Rain says, my friend don't like cop. Can you tell him that you protect people like him? Well, if he doesn't get it, he's just not going to get it. And that's not the purpose of my channel is to tell like, oh, I protect you. I'm standing on that wall. That's not my purpose. I, my idea is pure education, right? This is what it's like. This is how it works. So people can hate me. I'm fine with people hating me as long as they understand why they hate me. And I think a lot of people that hate the police just don't understand what they're even talking about. It's like a truck driver gets drunk or is taking a bunch of meth and runs over a school bus and then everybody hates truck drivers. And you're like, that's not, not how that works, right? Well, the same thing. People just don't understand. Like They don't get that meth isn't a huge problem with truck drivers where every truck driver is taking meth and they're all rolling, running over school buses. Well, same thing with cops. G. Wagner says, tuning in during Spanish class. Dude, don't do that. <laughs> Francis say, what's your take on police brutality versus police action must have? Some cases, actions are needed, but what's your take? I don't know what the question is. Police brutality versus police action? All of our use of force is very tightly regulated 
by department policy, statute, and case law. All of it. There are areas with gray lines, but you have to be reasonable in your use of force. In fact, that's in the case law, that your use of force has to be reasonable, objectively reasonable. So you handcuff a, do a guy and he's laying on the ground not doing anything and you punch him in the face, go to jail. Like, you're stupid. It's a dumb thing to do. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna advocate for that. And I'm not gonna make excuses for people who do dumb things. But the lines are clearly drawn and they're redrawn every day. And that's what I don't think a lot of people understand. Those lines are redrawn on a daily basis in case law. And that's why it's important to keep up on case law. CDN Bacon says, Ohio State gets to decide if charges are pressed on someone dis despite if the party says they don't want to. Saw my first domestic arrest on a ride along this past Sunday. What a mess. Domestics generally are, are a mess. Can you sh Rain says, can you show us your gun? What state are you in? Uh, right now I am carrying, I'm in Indiana, and I'm carrying a Glock 27 in a Harry's Holsters Contender. So that's what I'm carrying right now. Just came from the gym. Not gonna carry really heavy coming from the gym. There's only so much you can carry. Rain says, I like a girl, what should I do about it? Go talk to her. She's just a person. Hey, let me let me give you a clue. Women are people. If you go talk to her like a person and she's a nice person, she'll probably talk to you. And you'll probably either really quickly figure out that you guys aren't gonna work out or you're gonna talk. That's it. It's not difficult. Uh, RC says, long story short, he fought a six foot two, 270 pound guy beating his wife with a table leg. Ooh, that's a new one. And used everything on his belt to beat the guy down. And after the rest, the wife stabbed him in the shoulder. Ooh. I do know a guy, a guy used to work for when we had Chicago Housing Authority police here. He got stabbed with a rusty bayonet in his back, put him out of the job permanently. So he took a rusty bayonet, popped him in the back as he was searching an empty unit. And uh, he ended up getting tetanus and like infected and all sorts of stuff. Went out on personal, permanent disability. Getting stabbed sucks. Johnny Reb says, I think a good idea for a video would be discussing school searches because the sheriff in the next county over is facing charges for having 900 students spanned down without probable cause. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. Hacks in every profession. <sighs> Sometimes I get the impression that there's people that think that, like, the police is like a plumbing service, right? And if someone calls and says, hey, I need you to yada, 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 you then have to do that for them because they're a customer. It's not how it works. You can't do things that are illegal because someone asks you to do them. Hey, we think somebody's got drugs in this school. We need you to search all these students. Somebody said they were going to come in with a gun. We need you to search all these students. You can't do that. Oh, yeah, let me do that. <laughs> what are you doing? CS user says, how is it do you send text messages over the radio? I don't send text messages over the radio. As you can see, this is not... I don't, I've never, I don't think I've seen a radio that sends text messages. I'm talking about on the terminal. The terminal is the laptop computer that's mounted in the car. And it's connected via an internet connection. Don't ask me exactly how it all works. It's basically like the internet, right? But it's internal and encrypted. And you can send messages back and forth. I can send like emails through it. Like our version of emails, we use Spillman. Spillman has like an email service and then I have a department email service that goes through normal internet, but it's encrypted. And then we have a text messaging system on the computer. We don't send it through the, it's not the radio. Ben Cunningham says there are issues here with the scanner apps and individuals getting away because of them recently went to encryption and pissed the public off. Ha ha ha. It, like you scanners were cheap enough. There's been scanners around forever. So the app just makes it slightly more available. I don't think people are that, I don't know too many, too many criminals that are like that keyed in and have the scanner app running all the time. Plus the scanner app, you'd have to have a dedicated phone with just the scanner app running and you'd be listening to it all the time. So at that point, somebody that's going to do that is just going to get a scanner. Encryption does solve that though. 
X First Vase says, Yo, how's it going, man? Glad I can make it back to a stream. Glad to have you. Kaylee Kal Khaleesi's My Life 2014 says, What do you know about Metal Gear? Like the video game, Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid? It was around when I was a kid. James Pulaski says, You carry a backup pistol? I carry a backup revolver. Uh, Shay says, Hey, Tommy, how do you recommend dealing with tailgaters on the road? Don't deal with them. Move over. I know it's hard for people to like suck up their pride, but I drive a minivan a lot, right? Like I own a minivan. It's my wife's car and people hate minivans and they tailgate all the time. And my wife's like, let's throw things out the window. And I'm like, no, let's just move. Over. Let's just move out of their way. It's let them drive around. Luckily where I'm at, it's big highways all over the place. Just let them drive around. All right. You, you drive around. I don't care. It's not worth dying over. Like I've seen enough horrific wrecks. I don't want to be in one. I'm good. Sebastian says, hello from Tucson. 067349 says, how cold is it by you? Any snow yet? Uh, we had a little snow the other day. It's pretty cold. It's like 35 degrees. It's not, it's not terrible. I mean, it's, it's Chicago warm. CDN Bacon says, was it challenging to assert command presence at the beginning of your career? That seems the most intimidating part of getting into LE. Or does it become second nature by that time after academy? No, it takes a lot of time. If people don't realize it, the academy teaches you next to nothing. I mean, it's the basic, basic stuff. What you need to know, the bare minimum to be a cop. And the rest of it, you have to be taught or you have to learn like by osmosis. Right? You interact with other cops that do the job and can show you how to scale your interactions with people based upon their interactions. Right? Like we don't, we don't deal with every noise complaint the same way. Not everything even requires command presence. The problems that I solve by rolling my window down and going like, hey guys, how's it going? Oh, yeah, sorry. Hey, uh, you know, as much as I appreciate gangster rap at 2 a.m. real loud through thumping speakers because I'm awake at 3 a.m., not everyone in the public and especially not some old people in the neighborhood are really have the same affinity for gangster rap really loud at 3 a.m. Do you think you could just go pretty much anywhere else with that? And they go, oh, you know, we'll just, we'll just shut it off cool, man. Thanks. Have a nice day. Close the window. That doesn't require command presence at all. Right. And then when you interact with other officers who have been doing the job longer and who know how to scale properly, you can go from that to the third time you're there. Now we're shutting the radio off or the car is getting towed. But that's, you learn that, that you have to interact with people to get that experience, to have that command presence. It's not something you can fake, and it's not something they're going to teach in a class at the academy. Most things about police work cannot be taught in a class at the academy. Sam Lee says, let's be honest, Chicago has bomb-ass food, good food city. It is. I am lucky. Sebastian says, can you tell me why the police get upset when they see I have a scanner on when I'm on a case as a BEA. I don't know what a BEA is, but you have to understand that when we see someone with a scanner, our first thought is, why would this person want to be listening to a scanner? Like, this is obnoxious to me. I do not walk around with this, turn this on. I don't have a scanner running ever. Right? I don't want to know. I don't want to hear it all day. So when I hear someone with a scanner running, I'm like, what are you trying to do that you need the scanner? Right? So yeah, they're going to look at you funny. Uh, Xversify says, Tommy, what kind of protein to use? I use uh, Muscle Milk Pro because I'm fat. And this uh, lets me get 50 grams of protein and it's only 300 calories. Uh, I'm not endorsing this. I'm not telling you it's good for you or that you should drink it. It's just like the best thing that I found, having very limited knowledge of how this stuff actually works. So it's kind of like, you know, don't use my, don't use the gear I use because I use it. Like this is the protein that I drink because that's what I have found works for me. It seems to work. You know, I gain, I gain a lot of strength when I take it. It seems to gain more when I'm taking it than when I'm not taking it because I'm getting enough protein in my diet, not just eating donuts all day. So that's what I use that works for me, but might not be perfect for everybody. Abraham... 
uh, Hernandez says two parts to this. First part, here we can't pursuit unless we believe the person has committed a felony and something else, but I forgot what else. Second, wouldn't not pulling over f when getting pulled over considered a felony and gives you authority permission to pursuit. Uh, generally, when you have agencies that say it's a felony, that they'll only pursue for felonies, it's not the only pursuit for felonies. Like this is a classic case of like people only getting half the story, especially like news media gets this all the time. They'll get half the story, right? It's not the only pursuit for felonies. It's the only pursuit for forcible felonies because there's lots of felonies. There's no reason to pursue for. And the, the amount of the crime is not as far from the only consideration for whether or not you're going to have a pursuit go on, right? Like you could have a felony white collar, sorry, bourbon, you can have a felony white collar like embezzlement. You're not going to pursue him. If he gets in his car and runs, you're going to be like, whatever, homie. <laughs> we'll see you when you come home. Where are you going to go? Right? Like, we know who you are. <coughs> and then on the opposite end of the spectrum, you get like a kidnapping with the kidnappy in the car. Right? And like, that's a forcible felony. That's a very serious forcible felony where you're pretty sure the person that's in the trunk of the car is going to die if you don't catch him. Right? And so now you're like, Let's roll those dice. We kind of have to. We don't have a choice. So it's felony versus misdemeanor is not, that's not the clear line in the sand. And normally departments will, when they're going to set a level, they won't sell it as, oh, it's got it's got to be a felony. They'll say it's got to be a forcible felony. So it's going to be burglary, robbery, homicide, things like that. So like getting pulled over and then you don't pull over and it's a felony in your state, which I'm not sure it is anywhere, but normally you have to do something else in furtherance of trying to get away. But uh, it, it then doesn't give reason to pursue if they don't pull over and then do 150. We're not going to chase them for a taillight out. Well, most places. Ian says, if I'm hired with on with the police department, can I carry my Walther P99 DASA pistol for duty? Would you think about doing a UOF video PS nice truck driving references? <laughs> Thank you. Um... It, depending on the agency you work for, a lot of places by me don't allow Walther for whatever reason. It's just not on their approved list. I'm sure you can get duty holsters for it, so you could use it. Uh, and I think I've done use of force videos. Pretty sure. Uh, Gus P says, have you considered doing any joint videos with our YouTube law enforcement personalities? I know you're not political on here, but Dominic Izzo is close by and Mike the Cop is in Michigan. Figured it'd be good. Uh, Mike the Cop is kind of big time, and he has his own little business operation going. I would be happy to sit down with him. I'd be happy to. Uh, you know, seems like a nice guy. Seems funny. think people might get confused because we look alike, but I like him. Detroit's pretty far from Chicago, though. That's, that's a cruise, especially in this jalopy. But I, dude, I'd be happy to meet with him. But I'm not going to go out like looking to do it because you know you are aware that i run this out of like my garage and a cell phone <laughs> this isn't i'm not a big time operation here uh dominic Izzo is very political and as entertaining as i find him and uh as interesting as i find his uh, shedding light onto the uh the political system that exists in Cook county illinois uh i don't try to get into politics and uh, as I, I would, I would like to meet him to talk to him because I think he's an interesting person. But I, I don't know about doing a, a stream with him because that, for all the reasons that he talks about, when he talks about live streams, that's probably a bad idea for me since I'm still a commissioned police officer with a municipality. Uh, Gus says way to boost your channel. It probably would, but. Daniel Rails says some radios can use Pocketer DTMF but require another interface to send information on the frequency. Okay. I don't know what any of that means. Don, Tony says, can you tell me more about the duty of auxiliary police? It depends on the state and where you're at. Some of them are basically like unarmed security that work events for the city, and some of them are full-on police officers that work a beat and everything in between. Brad says, how to deal with tailgaters. If you have insurance, slam on your brakes, then let them smash into you and sue them. Just kidding. Don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. That's a bad idea. Francis says, scanners on mobile are illegal in some states unless prompted by OEM, HAM, PDF, DMS. 
I have no idea. It's not illegal here, so I don't know anything about that. Uh, Second Amendment Fanboy says, Hi, I carry 9mm Hydroshock. Is that a good bullet or should I change my ammo? <sighs> Hydroshocks are very old technology. There's a lot better stuff out there. HST, uh, Corbin DPX, pretty much anything that's bonded or monolithic is better than Hydroshocks now. Uh, almost all the scanner app software are using one single source broadcastify worldwide coverage. Yeah, they're using one single source for sending it out, but it has to be put on to the scanner somehow. They're not picking it all up from one location because the radios don't go that far. Ryan says, hello from another Southside Chicagoland officer. Hi, thanks for all you're doing on YouTube and the streets. It's a great service to us all. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate that. If you see me at any of the events... Stop on by. Say hi. Bring a donut. <laughs> um, Xversify says, muscle tech nitro is a solid protein, and it's all in one since I know you don't work out a lot, plus the calories are very low. I work out quite a bit. I work out almost every day, and I work out at least every day that I work. So I do work out quite a bit, but I can't make it my life. Like, I got a lot of stuff going on. So I'm not going to go like go to classes to figure out about protein. And everybody that tries to sell you protein anything is lying. That's what I've learned. Like Most of them are lying to sell you the stuff that they make. Uh, Sebastian says, do you have any tips for someone interested in law enforcement? Yeah, I got a whole channel full of them. Watch the videos. Have at. Like, there's all sorts of stuff on here. Uh, for ham radio guys and OEM, we send text through radio and pack it. There are ways, but simple. Most send voice message over radio unless emergency. I have no idea what any of that stuff means. I know that I only talk on mine. That's it. Dan says, Oh man, how did I miss the whole talk about packet radio and MDC tones? Our, our MDC, it just like beeps at us and stuff. When we change calls, we don't get, like, we don't get, like, our fire department gets tones, like, boo, we don't get that stuff. My radio doesn't even chirp, like, when you key it up, here, it doesn't even, it, it beeps when you turn it on, it doesn't even chirp, shut it off before they check on me, it doesn't even chirp when you hit the repeater to tell you that you're actually transmitting. So it just, there's no noise at all. We don't have tones. Anastasio says, what winter boots are you wearing now? I'm not wearing winter boots now. I don't wear winter boots until it gets like really cold, like below zero. Sebastian says, X26C or X3 Taser, what would you recommend? Uh, the X26C I know is scored away. The X3 Taser I didn't know was still available. The three shot one? I thought those would have been discontinued for the two shots. James says, wow, I'm like one hour away from you. <laughs> I'm in dire now. Uh, Dylan says, thanks for the content. You're welcome. Uh, CDN Bacon says, met with the U.S. Air Force recruiter and other... The other day, found out 90% of careers are unavailable to me due to security clearance issues. Apparently, you can't be a dual citizen if you want security clearance. I'm bummed. Well, you need to be only loyal to one country if you want a security clearance in that country. It's kind of how that works. Paul Kirk says, what experience do you have with federal law enforcement ammo? Uh, we had the federal law enforcement only uh, 223 rounds. I think we are using the 62 grain bondage with a, like a, like it was like a penetrator in the base and then it had a soft tip on the top. They work really well. We shot them in some gel and stuff and some other things. Um, they work they work fairly well. They've worked for us on I mean I think we've only had one on the street. But uh, they were alright. Uh, the handgun rounds I haven't used, so I couldn't give you an opinion on them. And law enforcement only ammo 
kind of a misnomer. Like most law enforcement only ammo isn't law enforcement only. It's law enforcement only only because of the packaging, right? Like law enforcement only ammo comes in 50 round packs and then everybody else ammo comes in 25 round packs because agencies are buying in huge quantities, right? And oftentimes it's the exact same stuff. Unless it's some armor piercing ammunition that's illegal under federal statute, it's not actually law enforcement only ammo. Ranger T is supposed to be law enforcement only, and I can buy that at the gun shop right up the street. Seth says, totally off subject, how often do you clean your gun? Every time I shoot it. When I shoot it enough, we're going to have to clean it in between. Uh, completely unpronounceable in Russian says, hi, I'm Russian traffic policeman. We use Motorola radio station in work too. See? Pretty universal. It gets, they normally make good gear. Mike Wilgerson says, what feature do you think might be a benefit were it added to a radio? I think what we're going to see in the future and what I think would be a benefit is we're going to have inclusion of all the electronics into one device. So I'm not going to have a radio and a car terminal uh, and a GPS on the car or on the terminal or on the radio and uh, a camera on the on the radio microphone and a separate device that hooks to the the holster so you take your gun out of the holster and dispatch checks on you you're not going to have that you're not going to have the, all these separate devices if you look at the history of technology we compress them down to one thing so we're probably going to have something about the size of my phone that gets mounted on me that's hardened that's waterproof that the battery is going to last all day and it's going to do all of those functions I don't think it's going to be about what we add to the radio. I think it's going to be what the electronics become. We're going to start seeing electronics become all one. And I can't wait for that because this stuff weighs a lot. And things like my laptop, I can unlock it and take it out of the car, but then I get this big suitcase size thing, right? And the, the processing power on that laptop is the same that's on the phone. So what I'm thinking is eventually going to happen is it's going to be through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi or whatever. The phone size device is going to be the computer that does everything, and when I get within proximity of the car, I can use a screen and a keyboard to type stuff from the car. It's all going to be on the phone, and I could also do it on the phone if I wanted to on scene. And I'm going to be able to run names right from the phone, and then the phone is also going to be able, it's going to be push to talk, push it, that's my radio, and it's also going to be the camera, it's going to be all in one. Maybe another 10, 15 years we'll get there. Hopefully sooner, but I'm betting by the end of my career, you're going to see all in one police department electronics. Squeaky says, I already taught myself how to fry chicken. I'm working on teaching myself how to make donuts. It's pretty easy, actually. My wife makes donuts. CDN Bacon says, I just didn't want to surrender my Canadian citizenship. This is a lot to think about. Many things to consider. It's a big move, not an easy decision to make. Oh, that's that's big boy rules there. James first says, you carry off duty? Yes. <laughs> uh, well, we're getting to the end, and it's almost an hour, so we're getting there. Andrew says, heard anything... Good or bad about the Freelink FreeMic 200? It's a wireless speaker mic. I don't trust wireless stuff for police work yet because it requires a separate battery, right? And we got these things pretty much locked down. These will run 16 hours. I'm, I'm hesitant with like, I've seen Bluetooth stuff that connects to the, the radio so you can get it through a Bluetooth. I'm hesitant about that stuff. Like my lizard brain tells me that's not going to work. And so I don't use it until I know it's going to work. So uh, I want to see like a major contract agency take that and use it for a while and guys from that agency saying, yeah, this works really well before I go buying it because those are expensive. I don't know about that particular product, but the wireless stuff tends to be pretty expensive. Uh, Sebastian says, for work, I have a 2013 Interceptor SUV with most police gear still in it, but the lights and decals... That would probably be why I get so many bad looks. Eh, maybe. Uh, Clark Davis says, I'm new to the video, LOL. It's going to get streamed, and then you can watch the whole thing in its entirety. So have that. Go back and watch it when we're done. You'll be able to watch the whole thing. I'm going to leave it up. Mike Wilkerson says, do all of the radios have a keyed sound tone the same alike? Which one perked, which one perked up cop ears when hearing it? Uh, No. I don't know what you're talking about, to be honest with you. They call my number, and I hear the number, and I've been listening to that for that number long enough that, I mean, that number peaks my ears up over everything else. 
Paul says, your holster videos on levels of retention advice on level one, two, three, and three plus holsters has been very helpful. Safari Line is a great brand. I think so too. Just get something that you think is going to be secure for you. It's going to work for you. HT100 are battery life mad skills. They are. Uh, oh, I can't even understand the stuff that Dane's talking about. He must be in the radios. Mike Wilgerson says, when you key the mic, does it make a tone? No, mine doesn't. It's supposed, some of them chirp, and it'll chirp to tell you that it's hitting off the repeater, that you're clear to talk, basically, is what it means to, to the operator. Mine doesn't do that. We're on an old analog system, and the repeater, it doesn't tell me that the repeater is good. <coughs> Clark Davis says, is this your only channel? I've always wondered. This is the only channel that I run. My buddy has a channel, uh, Jay Chuckla, and I've done one video on there for him where we made a, we were camping and we made a smoker. Every time we go camping, we like to make something ridiculous, and we made a smoker out of plywood and smoked like 20 wrecks of ribs. It's on his channel. It's Jay Chuckla, however you say that, but it's out there. I'm in it. It's not that exciting. It's not police work related. It's, well, it's exciting if you like smoking ribs, but, uh... Todd Thought says, schools have a lot of reasonable a lot of authority to conduct reasonable searches, including pat-downs due to the administration exception to the search warrant rule, locker searches, and even pat-downs have been upheld. But not by the police! That's on the school to do that. I'm not doing that for a school. You got to search this kid? You can go search that kid. If you want to get sued about it, go do go search that kid. That's not on me. And you can't you can get reasonable searches. Like You have to have some suspicion that this kid did something. You can't just randomly search all of... Like, you can't randomly go in the pockets of every kid in the school. It's not going to work. It's not going to work where I'm at. I can tell you that much. I'm not doing that. Uh, SOL and JWF says, The technology required to do what you said do exist. Only thing we need is better batteries. I'm sure it exists, but it's a matter of someone doing it in a package that's going to work and hardening it so we don't break the crap out of it. Francis says, Yeah, my questions are mostly radio because I myself... And a radio guru. I'm not a radio guru. I use it for work. I am to radios what most car, what mo many cops are to guns, right? Like I use this for work. This is a thing that I use at work, and I know enough about it to use it at work. And that's like kind of the limits of my understanding with radios. Like I'm into it. I understand that there's encryption and stuff like that, but I'm not. I'm not into like I'm. I'm a ham radio operator, and I know all about this stuff. It's not my thing. Squeaky Salmon says, do you have a video on the hazards of driving an unmarked car? A little bit. I have one that's how to drive a police car. I think I may have gone over that. Pugs for Hire says, do you have community service officers in your area? I have them in my area. My, my police department doesn't use them. Hello, hello, but with the correct input frequency. Oh my God, they're still talking to radio. I have no idea what... Normally, Dan just says... Like, he just says the most ridiculous things, and I have to, like, read it over first before he says it, but he's like, you guys have fun with your conversation about radios, because I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Marky says, just liked and subscribed. And Dan says something about moving to an 8 meg system. Michael Wilkerson says, with what frequency do you change your underwear? Unless I'm carrying inside the waistband, I don't, because I don't wear them. Little tidbit. That's more information than I'm sure anybody wanted to know. James Pulaski says, do you hunt? Not anymore. I don't have the opportunity I used to. Haha, <laughs> 8 meg and 11 meter hee hee. I have, well, now they're making radio jokes. I have no idea. All right, we're coming up on an hour. So that's the end of me, because YouTube freaks out if I go over an hour. When I talk for three hours about the... The other thing, they they freaked out. So, uh, later on today, I'm putting out the video of the zooming flashlight, the WowTech A3. You guys should have fun with that. Uh, it was an interesting light. Buddy of mine's using it. We're going to see how long that one lasts. The A Tactical A1, I still have. So, that one's working good. And it's been sent by the same company. I guess A Tactical got taken over by WowTech, or it's like a like sister companies. They all make in the same warehouse and call it different things. I don't know how that works. But uh, that's coming out later. And uh, that's about it. So until next week, you guys be safe, take care of each other, and I'm going to finish up my coffee.